Do you guys remember during the presidential debate on September 10th when Kamala Harris called Trump, uh, I don't remember the exact quote, but essentially said he was crazy because he was talking about U.S. troops in war zones. She said there's no troops in active war zones, when in fact there's about 3,400. Well, today, well, yesterday technically, the United States decided to send more troops to the Middle East, to Lebanon. Now, this if this sounds like something that George W. Bush would do, um, it is, because he did in 2004. It was part of his plan to beat Kerry. You know, people don't, what did they say? People don't want to change boats in the middle of the river, uh, you know, when there's a war going on or whatever they said back then. Well, this seems to be an escalation on the part of the U.S. Now, if you read the article that I've linked in the description, they'll note that there are 40,000 troops in that general area already. And we're sending, quote, a small number. Uh, yes, a small number that includes a dozen warships, four squadrons of fighter jets. There's an aircraft carrier over there. Does that sound like a small number to you or does that sound like escalation? That sounds like escalation to me. I don't think that Iran is going to take kindly to this, and I don't think that the that the Kamala and Joe administration thinks that they're going to. I think they expect them not to take kindly to it. Now, ostensibly, the purpose of this move is to, quote, help evacuate Americans from Lebanon. Well, we see how well evacuations work under the Biden-Harris administration uh, in Afghanistan. Yeah, that went great, didn't it? Um, the reality is you don't need a whole dozen warships sent to the Middle East to evacuate Americans. Why not use some of the troops that are over there already? Why are there 40,000 troops in the Middle East? Now, this isn't just going to be perceived as an escalation by the U.S. This is an escalation by the U.S. Make no mistake of it. The United States sending these troops over there is probably going to trigger Iran. Now, I hope this doesn't happen because if we trigger Iran, who's backing Iran? Well, China and Russia. If the U.S. goes to war with China and Russia, and, you know, essentially we already are at war with Russia, a draft is not out of the question. And people that say you're crazy for thinking about a draft, uh, no, we're not. It's not crazy to imagine going to war with these superpowers and conscripting young men into the armed services. Well, this bothers me. I have five younger brothers, all of them our draft age. One of them's a Marine. The other four are low-skilled workers who will be the top of the list. Single, unskilled workers. Young men. They're going to be at the top of the list for a draft. This is an escalation that very well could cause not only just a gigantic regional war, but a world war because of who is backing Lebanon and Iran and the might of the U.S. military that's already been poking the bear with our involvement in Ukraine. Do you guys remember the Abraham Accords? Do you remember when Donald Trump went to the Middle East and got the lunatics under control? I don't know how you can be opposed to that now. We don't need to be sending boots on the ground to the Middle East. We saw where this takes us after 9-11. We saw it. I have multiple family members, uncles, cousins, who fought in the Middle East. Do you guys remember how anti-war the media machine was back then? I was very young. I, I, was, I was about 10 when Bush was elected for his second term. But I remember the anti-war uh, sentiment on CNN because when it would come on TV, my mom wouldn't let me be in the room because... They would show uncensored piles of corpses. There was one, I saw it years later, and uh, I was reminded of it when I was listening to a couple of uh, other YouTubers talk about this particular topic last night, where, was it the, uh, what was it called? I don't remember what it was called. There were a Blackwater, where they had the people hung upside down and were burning them alive. That was on the internet for people to see. My dad found those pictures and was just absolutely disgusted by them. Um, 
I don't remember if that one was on TV or not, but I do remember the, the bodies because I snuck back up the stairs and was watching the TV with mom and dad. That gave me some nightmares, but my God, what are we thinking? Actually, I'll tell you what we're thinking. Um, I don't believe internal polling is doing so great for the Biden-Harris campaign, and this is a great way to distract and to keep people scared enough that they won't want a, a big change in administration. That's my personal opinion. Doesn't mean I'm right. I could be off base. I Sure. What other purpose is there to send a battle group, of, a, a group of warships, four squadrons of fighter jets over to the Middle East? Israel was the one that escalated this with their pagers and the walkie-talkies. And I'm not going to make a judgment on rightness and wrongness because we, frankly, should not be involved in that war. But Israel escalated it. So what? We get our soldiers' boots on the ground in the Middle East? Well, what happens when Hezbollah, who, you know, hates us, decides that they're going to kill a U.S. soldier or throw on an explosive vest and run into a group of them? What happens then? will be forced into World War III. And that is what it will be. Make no mistake. It will be World War III. This is a ridiculous move and should never have happened. That's about all.